still in the uh, Question eight. That uh, the function f and j are defined there, a quadratic and a linear function where a is positive constant. Find the range of f in terms of a. Oh, now range for quadratic is kind of where we came into doing a range of functions, wasn't it? And well, what do we need to know to, to come up with the range of the quadratic? We need to know. The what? Say that again, Becky. <coughs> we need to know the stationary point, don't we? We need to know somewhere on this quadratic is the stationary point, the turning point. And we need to know where it is. We have two ways that we can go about doing this. More than two, but we're. What's the two main ways we can find the turning point of the quadratic? Differentiation? Or completing the square. Either one we can do. So which one do you fancy? Completing the square. Okay, let's do completing the square. If we're going to complete the square on this. Um, remember, remember how this works? In order to complete the square, we've got a couple of ways of doing this. When we did this in core one, we tended to do that whole thing of uh, comparing coefficients. You know, we wanted it to be x plus something or squared plus something else and multiply it out and compare coefficients. And you could do it that way. Or we could think, um, we know about how the pattern goes that, that if we half the coefficient of x, then that will be the thing that, that goes in the bracket. Um, if we, if we think of this as being if half the coefficient of x is, uh, is 2a, isn't it? A half of 4a. If you square 2a, you get 4a squared. Now that there is a perfect square. That's what you get if you multiply out x plus 2a by x plus 2a. Of course, what I've written there isn't the same as what we started with. Because we had a plus a squared in the end there. So in order to make that balance up, well, you, it depends how detailed you want to go into this. We could say we just added 4a squared, so we have to take away 4a squared. And we already had an a squared that was there at the start. Now, all in all, that little bit that we've got going on at the end there means we need to have a minus... 3a squared at the end of this. And now if you check that, that through, multiply this bracket as x squared plus 2ax plus another 2ax is 4ax plus 2a times 2a, which is 4a squared. <coughs> Take away the 3a squared, leaves you with the a squared, and, and so we've got that right. What does that tell us about the quadratic? Well, it tell, tells us, because it's a positive coefficient of x squared, it tells us at the minimum point is at uh, x equals minus 2a and the y value would be minus 3a squared would be whatever, whatever was hanging around at the end there. You could achieve the same end result by differentiating. If we differentiate it, we get f dashed x is 2x plus 4a that would be zero at the point where x equals minus 2a. Then sub minus 2a into your equation and you get minus 3a squared. So you can do it either way. Um, we were supposed to be saying what the range was in terms of a. So what we've just discovered from this is that that's the minimum point of this curve. So the range is f of x is greater than or equal to minus 3a squared. That's what we should be ending up with at least. Notice it's got to be greater than or equal to because at the point when x is minus 2a it is actually equal to minus 3a squared. Okay? Of course, if this had been a negative coefficient of x squared, all you would have done at the end here is change this round so it's a less than or equal to. So that would have been a maximum point. Are we happy with that? 
it's actually it's a, a funny thing, isn't it? Because really, four marks here. And it's almost core one stuff, isn't it? Really? It's, it's kind of wrapped up in four or three words, but find find the minimum or maximum point of the quadratic is core one, isn't it? Part two. Given that f of g of 3 is 69, find the value of a, and hence find the value of x, such that the inverse of g of x is equal to x. Hmm. What? Whew. So what are we going to do? I think we need to do something about what f of g of three is actually going to be, don't we? Let's think about that function. f of g of x, that means f of g of x, and g of x was 4x minus 2a. And f says you take your input, and you take your input and you square it, And then you, you add 4a times your input, and then you add a squared. So that, not particularly nicely factorised or kind of sorted out function, is f of g of x. I'm not going to do anything too great to factorise it at the moment, because I know that f of g of 3 is equal to 69. So I know that if I put 3 in there instead of x, I've got I've got something that I can work with. I now have an equation in terms of a. Not the nicest of equations, but it gives me something to go at. Um, so what have we got? I've got, let's say this is 12 minus 2a all squared. 12 minus 2a, and this is an a squared. I'm just going to have to, to multiply things, tidy things up until I can get to a point where I can do something with this. This is, uh, I, I'm going to multiply it out. Um, two twelves, what maybe? 24. Minus 8a squared plus a squared. My a term seems to have disappeared in there. 144 um, minus 3a squared. Am I right with this? Is equal to 69. So let's get everything over to one side. We've got 3a squared minus. Um, 75? Ooh! <laughs> Alex, have you spotted a mistake in there? No. Okay. Um, I think I've ended up with a squared minus 25 is zero. That feels quite nice to have got to. I think that we've got a minus 5a plus 5. Is zero. Do we have any background information about A? It's positive constant. <laughs> so A equals five. That's good. We're only part way there though. Find the value of A and hence find the value of X such that the inverse of G is equal to X. So having done that, we now need to find the inverse of g. Um, g of x was, well a is 5 now, so g of x is 4x minus 10. Remember how we find the inverse? We, we do that thing of swapping x and y around at some stage. We swap it now. 
x is 4y minus 10, so x plus 10 is 4y, so y is x plus 10 over 4. So the inverse of g is x plus 10 over 4. We need to find the value where that is equal to x. If that is equal to x, then x plus 10 over 4 is x. x plus 10 is 4x. 10 is 3x. x is 10 over 3. Kapow! Just felt like that was the right response at the end of one of those. Right. And that's maths.